This is the intro to Season of Discovery. Okay, mm -hmm. let's see this. Hello, welcome to WoWcast. Today we're gonna to talk about WoW Classic Season of Discovery. Oh, they're both at BlizzCon. And I have two special guests with me today. I'm Nora Valletta, I'm a lead software engineer on WoW Classic. Mm -hmm. I'm Josh Greenfield, and I'm a senior game producer on WoW Classic. So, what is Season of Discovery? Season of Discovery is a uh, interesting new twist on WoW Classic that sort of revisits and recaptures the exploration aspect of World of Warcraft and really encourages players to get in tune with Azeroth and really pay attention to their surroundings and pick up on things that might be different, things that might be new to them. And Wait, that is that a Librum that dropped at level 40? What yeah. the fuck? Learn a new ability after unleashing 10 seals onto your enemies. Oh, that's really cool. Holy shit. On Isn't that cool? That might be different, yeah. Things that might be new to them and experience that with other players. Yeah, to add to that too, Season of Discovery, due to the kind of seasonal nature of it, mm -hmm. it's a really great opportunity for us to take kind of a lot of risks and wild chances on things. And so also to kind of ask what if questions, like what if you could heal as a mage? Or what if you could tank as a rogue That's or a not warlock? And these are all warlock, super okay, yeah. interesting twists on the class fantasy uh, that we've sort of know and love about original mm -hmm. World of Warcraft and gives you a new way to approach, a new lens through which to view the original World of Warcraft world. How does a new character experience Season of Discovery? Is it different than WoW Classic? It'll be much the same as original World of Warcraft when you first create your character. You know, you'll kind of feel like the game's going to be a lot the same. North Shire Abbey, if you're a human, you'll go kill wolves, kill a few kobolds. But when you hit level two, pretty much right away, you're going to get your first quest to discover your first rune ability. And that's the first taste of the discoveries in Season of Discovery. Mm -hmm. So you complete that quest, you get your first rune ability, and these are usually really impactful rune abilities. But after that, that's dope. the game doesn't yeah. really tell you what to do. It just kind of says, go find more. And that's really what Season of Discovery is all about, is going out and rediscovering the original World of Warcraft world. Can you explain more about what runes are? Runes are essentially it's like abilities. a new tab in your spellbook, I guess. That players can find through various means uh, out in the open world. Mm -hmm. There are 12 per class in the 1 to 25 leveling bracket, and there will be additional runes in later leveling brackets. Players will essentially, like Josh said, venture out into the world. They will uh, work towards discovering these runes, uh, and some of them are a little bit more involved than others. That being said, they are tied to some really cool abilities that players can mix and match. There are different rune engraving slots and, you know, find interesting new ways to play their class. So how do rune discoveries play into the class fantasies? Um, so if you can imagine yourself as perhaps a mage, right? Mages are able to manipulate fire, ice, uh, and even time in some cases. Uh, mm -hmm. And so you can imagine those discoveries for mages sort of playing into those things. You may end up having to manipulate those things over the course of having to uh, discover and solve some of the riddles that will earn you some runes. Yeah, to add on to yeah, that. I'm going to be really curious to know like kind of how much new stuff is in this because I know Blizzard said they go, oh, we're not going to have a beta for Season of Discovery. Guys, the beta comes out in about 30 minutes, okay? A lot of this shit, I bet, isn't going to work. But we'll see what happens. One of the things that we're really interested in with Season of Discovery is giving a little exploration to, you know, how does, for example, a dwarf priest differ from a mm -hmm. undead priest? And how would they channel the energies of the light and the shadow differently? And there's... It's safe to say that there's that's going to play into some of the discoveries and some of the things you're going to need to do mm -hmm. to find some of the priest abilities. What are you most excited about? I'm personally very excited for players to really uh, immerse themselves in Azeroth uh, in, in a way that I, I feel like was easy and, and it was kind of the, the only way to experience WoW Classic when it initially launched because you didn't know what to expect. You were kind of yeah, sure. uh, adventuring out into the world. You couldn't just go and look up a guide on where to find everything or what to do. And so I, I look forward to having players experience that again. I think for me, the thing I'm most excited about is new raid and dungeon content. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a big fan of in-game raiding, and we've got some really amazing stuff coming in Season of Discovery. I'm going to be really curious to see what this Black Fathom Deeps raid is going to be. Like, we'll probably do a GDKP for it. So, uh, guys, make sure to start buying gold now. Put your orders in, and uh, make sure that you're ready as soon as it comes out.
You know, we talked about this at BlizzCon that the first raid is Black Fathom Deeps, which is a, you know, it's an iconic leveling dungeon that we've converted into a new raid instance. Um, we've completely from the mm -hmm. ground up rebuilt all seven bosses yeah. in the raid. So cool. um, yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so much fun. Uh, and we got a lot of great feedback from BlizzCon on this, and we're super excited for people to actually see the whole raid in the wild. Yeah, they only showed a little bit of it. Are from BlizzCon that you can talk about? Yeah, we've been listening to a lot of feedback ever since BlizzCon. Okay. Uh, we've been reading social media. We've been playtesting still internally oh. amongst ourselves. They've been reading uh, Reddit. One of the fun things about Season of Discovery is we've gotten kind of a crack team together internally on, <laughs> on the Classic team and the greater Team 2 World of Warcraft team together. And we've done a ton of raid playtests, ton of class playtests. And we've really been kind of, we've narrowed down this process to kind of process that feedback and act on it quickly. So we've already made a number of adjustments uh, since BlizzCon. And, uh, I think players will be uh, pleasantly surprised by a lot of those. The best thing about BlizzCon for this is that we got a lot of great feedback on the raid. And, you know, we kind of tuned the raid for fun at BlizzCon, right? Like, mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't was particularly punishing. We wanted people to... Yeah, I remember thinking that myself. Like, bro, I remember watching, like, Fandy try to jump over that thing. Bro, like, her and, like, s Fan. I think there's somebody else. Bro, they fell down, like, five times. I'm like, man... Like you expect a classic wild player to be able to do this? This is gonna be this is gonna be a lot, man. Really go in there and have fun, but we've maybe cranked it up a little bit oh. for the for the live release, and we think it's gonna be a really fun challenge, and we also think it's gonna be really mm -hmm. rewarding. We've uh, tuned the rewards to be very powerful for this level. Man. There's like think. a epic sword that drops from this, or something like that. People are gonna have a lot of fun with those. Players have been asking, what's the right way to level up in Season Discovery? I don't think there's a right way to level up in Season The right way to level up is to download uh, the guide uh, and then uh, pay money for the plugin for the leveling add-on and then follow uh, the directions uh, on the map that it tells you without putting any thought at all into the quests or reading them in any capacity. And then once you uh, get to the higher parts of the game what you want to do is you want to uh, pay a mage uh, to level your character for you in dungeons discovery um you know the leveling journey in season of discovery yeah. is so that way you can finally play the game how it was in original world of warcraft you know you can do quests you can uh, fight monsters you can also do dungeons mm -hmm. but the thing that we really do like about the season is that there's so much in the outside world that you know you might find it as a little bit uh, better use of your time to level in the outside world to be able to find those runes and Ooh, be, be able to keep your eyes cool. peeled for wherever they might be lurking you know, over the next hill or in the next cave or crypt. And some of those runes will also uh, encourage players to team up and, uh, you know, solve puzzles uh -oh. together. Yeah. Uh -oh. uh, and so th there's th there is going to be a lot of collaboration involved, I think, between players. What are some unique approaches that you guys are taking with Season to Discovery? Yeah, I think that's one of the most exciting things about Season of Discovery is mm -hmm. it's a, it gives us a chance to really try something daring and new. And one of the things we're really trying to do is keep as many of the discoveries that you're going to find yeah. that, on your class kind of hidden in a secret. And to that end, we're not having a public beta or a PTR. We're basically going to, everyone's going to experience it all at once together. Uh, it will be fresh for everyone. As I um, said before, uh, this is actually not true. They are having a public beta and a PTR, and it's coming out in a half hour. Uh, they, they are having it, and you're part of it, I'm part of it, we're all part of it. In those first few weeks, we're going to see a ton of information sharing and, and secret Go finding ahead. communities pop up, and that's super exciting to us. Oh, absolutely. Another way uh, in which we're kind of experimenting here is that, as you know, there is a zone-wide PvP event in Ashenvale, and we have uh, mm -hmm. plans I'll for be curious other to see what you know, zone-wide PvP like. events in the future as well. And we want to make sure is that everyone's on an even playing field. One of the things we're doing is we, we will be actually trying to enforce some amount of faction balance on Season of Discovery servers. Oh, wow. Um, and we're leaving it all very configurable, so mm -hmm. we're, we're going to kind of keep an eye on the situation and, and figure out what, what kind of balance feels appropriate. I want to move on to another player question that I've been seeing. And the problem with that is like, so I feel like even 60-40 is really bad. Personally, I feel like that's really, really bad. Because that means that like for every, like let's say you have 10 people, they have 15 people. That's like an insurmountable number, number of extra people. That's huge. That's uh, how will class tuning work? So we very purposely, uh, you know, we'll be keeping an eye on, on all the abilities, 
on the PPP situation, on you know the the raid, and mm -hmm. making sure that nothing is too absolutely Every bonkers. Every 60, they have 40, um, yeah. But we have been That's prioritizing huge. fun over perfect balance. Um, there is some aspect to things kind of feeling mm -hmm. a little bit wild in a game that I think is very fun and important to have. Yeah, uh, sure. Especially in Season of Discovery, where we're kind of going into this with this experiment experimentation mindset. Yeah. Yeah, particularly with the kind of level banded approach, too. Um, trying to kind of chase perfect balance as we create as we move through the level bands it's 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 probably not a great place for us to spend our time we're definitely like ignore said we're gonna look for outliers and things like that but really we're focused on making each class feel very fun and lean into each class's class fantasy and each level band um, and then we'll you know obviously make adjustments as we go we've seen a lot of uh, players talking about um, basically trying to science through all the abilities and trying to like math out how they're gonna like succeed in the one to 25 leveling bracket and that's like really awesome. i i think it's kind of funny how how seriously people take a level 25 game you know like it, it's, it's not even halfway to max level and people are trying to math the whole thing out awesome but it's also like hey that's, crazy that's the first bracket yeah. you know things may <laughs> shift a little in in the future brackets as you gain more abilities and you know and, and as the season progresses so what is the next level band after 1 to 25? Mm -hmm. uh, the level 25 to 40 level band. We're very excited about that. You're going to be able to get your 31 point talent. Um, and you're also going to be able to go into a new raid. And uh, we're happy to confirm that it is going to be Nomergon that you're going to go into. Wow. So we're actually getting a Nomergon raid. Holy shit. I wonder if they're going to have... So like in retail WoW, there's like a... Uh, after you kill Mechatork here... There's, like, this secondary, like, Omega Uber boss that's, like, super fucking hard that, like, one-shots you if you mess up one mechanic. And I remember, like, he got discovered, like, maybe, I don't know, like, in Legion or something like that. And I remember doing him, like, back in the day. Like, yeah, like, what if Memoron spawns or something like that? Like, I hope they have s super cool stuff like that. But I also hope that it drops no rewards. Because I think that you can't, like, Classic WoW is popular because brain dead dumb fucks can go in and play the game and clear the whole thing and get the best gear in the game. If you take that away from them, the game will die. I'm serious. Like, I, I really am. I, I, I genuinely believe that. I think Classic WoW is popular because it's easy. And if you make it hard, people are going to quit. At level 40. Can't wait for everybody in the party to get lost. <laughs> no, no, right. It is an alliance territory. How will Horde get there? Yeah, um, one of the things we're doing with all the raids in Season of Discovery is we're actually, uh, you know, we're keeping the quests yeah. intact. We're kind of re redoing them. In a lot of cases, we're upping the rewards for them. But one of the quests that the Horde has is to actually get a teleporter from Stranglethorn Ooh. Vale to Nomergon. And so we're going to maintain that quest. And like you said, it is Alliance territory. So we're going to do a little something special for the Horde here so that maybe they're on an even playing field uh, going that deep into Alliance mm -hmm. zones. Yeah, sure. That makes Speaking sense. Speaking of PvP, as you're leveling through that, you know, 25 to 40 uh, leveling range, I think a very iconic zone uh, for players, especially those who uh, play on PvP realms, a is Stranglethorn Vale. Yeah. And so, I don't know, that might be a, a really good candidate for another zone-wide PvP event. So with the new level ban from 25 to 40, what do players need to do? I hope that they don't really try to force certain objectives very much. I just hope that they have things where it's like, kill like 20 unique players, right? Kill 20 different players as like a weekly quest or something like that, rather than be like, oh, you have to capture this objective, you have to do this thing. You know, I, I think just like kind of leave it as open-ended as possible. Um, so, I mean, the, the cap is just gonna raise, so they'll be able to level to 40 and they'll level- Collect 20 know, the years, yeah. They typically would maybe in WoW Classic. Airdrops uh, and BFA? Yeah, those would be amazing. there being a lot more for them to- I would love that. Kind of stumble upon in the world and- Would uh, you guys like that? If like, for example, in Stranglethorn Vale, they had like a, you know, a gnomish flying machine come out and like drop a, a chest that was gonna land? Like, I actually think that'd be really, really cool. Because like the way it worked in BFA is that it took like a 10 second cast but if a certain person from a faction actually finished the cast, the chest was lootable by every single player in that zone uh, of that faction. I would really like that. I actually thought it was one of the coolest systems that BFA had, and it was really weird to me that they got rid of it, I think, in Shadowlands. BR shit? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. I liked it a lot. It's in Dragonflight? Yeah, I know. 
unlock some additional abilities in that band. With your characters, uh, what happens to them after season discovery? That's something that we've been. Uh, Wait, no, yeah, no. I mean, like they took it out in Shadowlands, they brought it back in Dragonflight. I, I know that. Uh, I'm just explaining that, like, I was sad whenever they got rid of it. I'm glad they brought it back, and I think the reason why they brought it back is because people liked it. That's my point. In mind, we do want players to uh, be mm -hmm. able to preserve their characters that they have, uh, you know, sort of embarked on this new season of Discovery <laughs> journey with, uh, and so. We okay. don't have concrete plans to share as of right now, but we do want uh, to make sure players' characters are persisted in some way when the season ends. Okay. Yeah, we, we want cool. players to go somewhere with these characters uh, that is a, a natural place for them to end up. You like know, Dragonflight. We're flight. in a situation now where we're creating yeah. new items, we're doing all sorts of new different things. There might be new mm -hmm. item sets, yeah. things like that. And yeah. would those work in era? Potentially not, but yeah. no, they it's wouldn't. very possible for... I think it would be disastrous if they combined the Season of Discovery stuff with era. Uh, seasonal characters. I don't think anybody would want that. Not quite era, but someplace really cool. So when you guys are playing on the build and testing it out, do you guys have any fun stories you can share? Yeah. Yeah, tons. <laughs> uh, one of the funniest things mm -hmm. about Season of Discovery is w when we're playing playtesting as a group it, internally together, we end up f in situations where someone's like, oh yeah, this thing is from uh, the original game, right? And we're like, no, that's actually new. And sort of the inverse of that is whenever the hardcore PTR actually came out, yeah. the first day that it was up, you know, I had logged in and I had created a dwarf character and there's actually a quest in Cold Ridge Valley that asks you to get a rune in original World of Warcraft. It's completely unrelated to the rune system, but oh, I clever. panicked because I forgot. And I'm like getting on the phone with QA and trying to, oh like, my gosh. I'm like, oh no, it's in the build, it's in the build. It's not. It he wasn't. thought it was, it was yeah. Totally just. Okay. So it goes funny. both ways. There's a lot of that kind of funny, uh, is this is this is this new? Is this old uh, effect that happens? And it's it's just every time it happens, it's, it's usually funny. There was also a really uh, er really early on. There was a rogue rune that uh, essentially allowed them to kind of like kick somebody and knock them back a little ways. Ooh. And there ended up being a bug. Maybe someone added an additional zero or something. But like there ended up being a bug where like. The knockback was insane, such that you would just knock them into orbit, basically. <laughs> and like we saw, gosh. you know, like someone demo it, and we're just like, ah, oh, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> and you know, in in the That'd interest cool. of making sure classic still feels like classic, the knockback in general was something that we kind of decided to 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 move away from, so you won't be able to knock people back as a rogue. But it's it was just a funny, you know, what if you could knock somebody off into the totally different zone? So before we wrap up, is there any other updates that you guys can share? Yeah, you know, since BlizzCon, we've been watching a ton of feedback. And oh, hey, Josh. Hey, Nora. Uh, uh, hi, Bethany. Uh, oh, um, it's that you know, guy. I, we're really strapped on time. And you know, people really haven't been asking for anything like this. But I just made a new two-handed enhancement shaman rune. And I want to hear what you think about it. That's great, man. But we're kind of in the middle of something right now. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. I'll uh, okay. see you <laughs> Well, I guess that wraps up WoWcast. Great. So <laughs> we'll see you Good guys one. next time. So they are going to do two-handed enhance. I'm really glad about that. I was, uh, I wasn't sure, so I'm glad to see it. Was it scripted? Wait, do you really think it was scripted? No way. No way. No, it wasn't. That, that cult, that totally happened randomly. What do you mean? Yeah, no, I think all this seems really good, man. Like, I'm super excited about, it, about playing it. I, like... I'm mainly excited to see, like, where the game goes. Not even necessarily where it is right now. But just, like, where the game goes. Like, after a few, um... After a few weeks, what's gonna happen? How are people gonna respond to it? Uh, I don't know.